Hey, this morning we are speaking about a very awesome, exciting, I would say mind-boggling, mind-blowing subject, and that is the power of God. Can't wait to get into the power of God. It's an amazing topic, an amazing thing to think about. And so we're going to look in God's Word and talk about the power of God. I'm going to go down through some things about how we think about the power of God. Uh, from God's Word, uh, but then towards our close, we are going to deal with a very important subject for every single one of us that affects us every single day, so I hope you will uh, really clue in here and key in, I hope you get your Bibles out and you've got God's Word in your hand, whether it's on a tablet or your phone, or in paper uh, back or leather back, however you have it, get God's Word ready to go, we're going to jump in. But well, I want to ask this question as we get going, and we'll answer it as we uh, go along. But here's the question that we want to think about all the way through this morning in the 20 minutes or so we're going to spend uh, looking at God's Word today. Here's the question. What comes to mind when you think about the power of God? Right now, wherever you are, and those of us who are here, uh, what comes to your mind? What's the first thing? What's the second thing? What comes to your mind when you think of the power of God. Uh, we're going to go down through some things that we think about as we look into God's Word, and then we'll get into a really, really awesome uh, uh, subject matter at the very end that's going to really uh, apply to our life. But let's just look at that. First of all, I think many people uh, like me, one of the first things you think of when you think of the power of God is the power of God in creation. I. That's like one of the first things that comes to my mind when I think about the power of God, and that is His power to create. And uh, we're going to uh, read some scripture verses. The very first one that we have to look at is Genesis 1-1. Uh, in the beginning of God's Word, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So right away, we see God's power in verse 1 of God's Word. In creation, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I want to read Jeremiah 10, verse 12. Jeremiah 10, 12. And God's word says in Jeremiah, He has made the earth by His power. He has established the world by His wisdom and stretched out the heavens at His discretion. That's real power. Uh, I want to read Job 26, 14. Uh, the book of Job is a really fascinating book, as most of you are familiar with. But I love how it talks about God's handiwork. Job 26, verse 14 says this. Indeed, these are the mere edges of his ways. Can we hold on to that thought for a minute? Speaking of God's power in creation in this context. God's Word says, indeed, these are the mere edges of His ways. If we're speaking about the creation of the earth, that's a big deal to us. It's just scratching the surface to God's true power. The rest of the verse goes like this. The thunder of His power, who can understand? Uh, I took my uh, daughter back to college. Uh, just this past week from when, up Wednesday, and they got back Friday night. And uh, for her summer job, she started her first summer job. And uh, while I was up there, after I got her settled in, uh, man, it, I just love the mountains. Who doesn't love the mountains? And for the people that live in North Georgia and are local, they're not really mountains. For us in Florida, they are mountains. And they're high, and they're big and tall. Um, for them, they're probably hills, maybe the foothills, I think they call it, you know, the Smoky Mountains. But man, how gorgeous was that? And I got to do one of my uh, most favorite things that I love to do uh, when I get the chance, I don't get the chance very often, but that's uh, go fishing in a stream for trout. I love doing that. There are very few things that I love doing more than getting in the stream, in God's handiwork, uh, there were flowers lining the stream. I think they're called mountain laurel. These pink flowers just lined the stream. It was gorgeous. Uh, and I actually caught a trout too. So that was like on top, of, uh, the cherry on top of all this beautiful creation I got to enjoy. 
And there's many more verses that speak of the power of God in creation. I just want to uh, finish this little segment with Romans 1.20. Romans 1.20 says this, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Okay, so God's word is saying here, since the foundation of the world, people can see God's handiwork in creation by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Even when, when someone never hears of the gospel, they can see God in, in his handiwork. I mean, that's amazing. And that's one of the first things that we think of, a lot of people think of, when we think about the power of God. Let me give you another one. Uh, again, that question, what comes to mind when you think about the power of God? Uh, the second one is the power of God in salvation. And some of you, that's the first thing you think of, the power of God in salvation. Let me read to you Romans 1, 16 through 17. And I hope you're familiar with this. Uh, Romans 1, 16 and 17, God's word says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, there's our key today, this is, it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Please catch this. The power of God that became available to all through the shedding of the blood of Christ, this power of the gospel is the power to transform anyone and everyone from eternal death to eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen? That's real power that nobody else has. Only God can change us through the power of the shed blood of Jesus Christ from eternal death to eternal life. It is real, it is true, it is wonder-working power, and it is amazing. And please, those of you that have received Jesus into your heart, never take for granted the power of God in salvation and saving your soul, his power over sin and his power over death. Do we understand that our power cannot do that? Our power, our wisdom, our talent, our good works, our church membership. Nothing is powerful enough to save you. To save you from eternal death and hell unto eternal life in heaven. Except this, the matchless power of the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Amen. Hey, I want to give you another uh, different aspect of God's power. Uh, this is the third one we're looking at, answering that question. What comes to mind when you think about the power of God? Uh, how about the daily power of God that overcomes? How about the daily power of God that empowers us to be an overcomer? This may be what comes to your mind first. When you're thinking about your daily life, and how God's power in you strengthens you to do what you could not do on your own. Let me read to you 1 John 5, 4. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Romans 8, 37 Romans 8, 37 says this, Yet in all these things we are, what? More than conquerors through Him who loved us. That's the power to overcome every single day. One more verse, 1 John 4, 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says this, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why? Because He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Please listen, the power of God to overcome is his power working in us. It's his power working in us. 
to overcome anything and everything that comes our way. It's more than enough power to overcome addiction. It's more than enough power to overcome depression. It's more than enough power to overcome pain, hurt, temptation, emotional scars. Anything and everything can be overcome by the power of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4, 13. We can add many, many things to this list of what comes to mind when we think about the power of God. But I want to get to our main point and our main focus for today. And please don't miss this. As great and amazing and wonderful as the power of God is, the power of God does not include everything I want. Let that settle a minute. I'll take a drink and I'll come back and, and give you a minute to digest that. Let me say that again. As great and amazing and wonderful as the power of God is, please understand, the power of God does not include every single thing that I want. Or every single thing that you want. Please understand and embrace this truth. Many people don't understand this. And then there are people who understand it, but they really don't want to embrace it. They don't want to accept it or trust God in it. And know that, you know what? It's okay that everything I want is not included in the power of God. It's actually a good thing. That the power of God does not include everything I want. Why is this such a big deal? Why does it matter that I first understand this truth? That the power of God doesn't include everything I want. And secondly, why should I embrace that and accept it and actually be thankful for it? So here it is. This is the bottom line. The main point today. The power of God is all about God's will. Are you with me? The power of God is all about accomplishing God's will. That's what it's here for. That's what it's all about. It's not about my will and giving me the power to do whatever I want. It's all about giving power to making God's will happen. And here's the key. If I'm not all about God's will, I am off track. I am missing the mark. I am missing because that's what following Jesus is all about. That's what becoming a disciple of Christ is all about. That's what seek ye first means. It's all about Him. It's not all about me. It's all about Him. It's all about His will taking place. Not me and not my will. Jesus said it when He taught His disciples how to pray. Do you remember the Lord's Prayer as we call it? His disciples asked him to teach them to pray. He gave us this incredible structure, this incredible, I would call it an outline of how to pray. And most of you know it. If you don't know it, find it and, and learn it. But the first part of it speaks to our subject today. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy what? Thy will come. Be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Do we understand that God's will is done every second of the day in heaven? There is no sin in heaven. There are no obstructions to God's will in heaven. Every day, God's will is done in heaven like clockwork. God's will is accomplished. God's will is done in heaven every day. Because there's no sin. There's nothing obstructing His will. That's the way God wants it in our life. That's the way He wants it on earth. And that's why in His prayer, Jesus said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You may remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and His powerful prayer there. Knowing what he was going into and getting into uh, when it came to being crucified on that cross. Knowing that he was going to be beaten within an inch of his life. Knowing that he was going to have an excruciating death on the cross. 
in his 100% humanness, even though he was 100% God, and that's hard to fathom, and that's okay. But in his humanness, what did he say? If this cup can pass from me, let it be. May this cup pass from me. If there's any way to get this whole salvation done without me having to get this is my little phraseology. If there's any way we can do this without me having to get beat within an inch of my life and have nails driven into my hands and feet and hang on a cross to die, may this cup, this situation, what's happening, may this pass from me. But what did he say at the end? And what we should say each and every day at the end of our prayers, he said, not my will, but thine be done. There is nothing wrong with praying for things that you want. We pray as best we know how. Uh, Jesus helps us, God's word says, in our prayers to God. Because sometimes we don't even know what to say. And it's okay to, to you know, if we pray, man, Lord, I'd, I'd really like a promotion. Or, man, Lord, I'd really like this, like that. But what should we say at the end of every single prayer? Not my will, but thine be done. We want to be all about God's business, God's will. And here's where the rubber meets the road. And it's in everyday life. How do we look at God's power when we pray and when we maybe don't get what we want? This is one of the most important questions we will ever answer. Because unfortunately, many times when we don't get the answer we want, we think somehow, some way, God just... Was it powerful enough maybe to do it? Or, so if he's not powerful enough to do it, to do this, maybe he's not powerful enough to do something else. I think we back off of healing sometimes because maybe he's just not powerful enough to do that. Maybe he did that a long time ago, but I'm not sure about it now. God's power is the same just like he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just we have to understand that just because we don't get the answer we want, does not mean that God's power is any less. Uh, I saw a movie, uh, my wife and I, my daughter, when she was here, we watched a little movie on a pay-per-view called I Still Believe. If you have watched it, you know it's an awesome Christian movie. If you've never seen it, I encourage you to get it. It's on most of the uh, cable channels or cable providers. Um, it's the story of Jeremy Camp and uh, the true story of uh, this period in his life that was very difficult, and he's, he's traveled the world singing and writing songs, and he's talked about the story, so I'm not telling you the ending. I'm terrible about that, by the way. Some, you know, sometimes I'll really get excited about a movie or something, and I'll, I'll tell somebody the end that hasn't seen it yet, so I'm not telling you the end that you, you probably know the end, <laughs> but uh, if you don't, you might want to go like this or something, but... Uh, it's a great story where he goes to college and he falls in love and he gets engaged, uh, but then his fiance uh, gets cancer and she goes through chemo and the whole nine yards and it doesn't look good. It looks like she may die. Well, he prays for her and gets a whole lot of people around the country to pray for her and God heals her. And it's this amazing victory where she goes back in and they say, your cancer is gone, we can't explain it. You've been healed. And he just, Jeremy just believed, said, I know God's going to heal you. And he prayed and God healed her. And they got married and went on their honeymoon and everything was perfect. But when they came back from their honeymoon, she started getting sick again, went to the doctor, the cancer had come back and it was even worse. And it was inoperable. There was nothing they could do, no chemo. No operations, no anything. Well, Jeremy kept telling her, I am, we're just going to pray another miracle and, and it's going to happen. And we're just, God's going to heal you. And he believed it, but God did not heal her. And she passed away. And he struggled with that for, for a long time. Uh, you know, why did God heal her once, but he didn't heal her the second time? Uh, you know, what was God's purpose in, you know, getting married for a year? You know, it just, didn't make sense to him. But at one point, he allowed the Lord to speak to him. He allowed the Lord to heal him. And he wrote this awesome, amazing, beautiful song called I Still 
believe. Even though I cannot see. Let the Lord speak to your heart about that today. Man is powerful. That's his power. Even when I can't see. Even when I can't understand. Why you say no sometimes. Or, or why things aren't going my way. I still believe. Can you say that today? I'm so thankful for that movie. And that story. And that encouragement. Where Jeremy Camp from, from his pain. Told the Lord. You know what? I don't, I don't understand it all. But I still believe. And that's what we're talking about today. The power of God is still there, whether he says yes or no. And sometimes he gives us what we want and we say hallelujah, praise the Lord, and it's really fun and it's really awesome. And then sometimes he says no, and a lot of times he says wait. And that's a tough one too. But whatever we, he says, we know that he says it in love, and we know that he has a great purpose in every answer he gives us. And his power is not diminished, no matter what his answers to us are. I want to read to you uh, Hebrews 13, 20 and 21 this morning as we close our time. I hope you'll go there in your Bibles. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21, as we close our thoughts and wrap up this morning from God's Word. And God's word says this, Hebrews 13, verse 20. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work. Why? Why? To do his will. Think about that. In verse 21, God wants to make you complete. That's what his power is doing if we allow it. In every good work, what? To do his will. Working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We know that sometimes God says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says wait. But every single time, God says, I love you. And I have a great plan for you. Within my will, if you'll join me, if you'll follow me, I will do more in you and through you than you could ever ask or imagine. And then, I'll take you to heaven to be with me forever. Amen? I hope this morning you'll trust him, you'll believe in him, you'll put your faith in him each day and you can be and will be more than a conqueror through him who loves you would you pray with me Heavenly Father I want to thank you so much for your word God get it into our hearts get it into our minds and Lord help us to embrace the truth of the power that is in your hands the power that created this earth and the universe and speaks the world's and stars into existence, knows the stars by name. Lord, you formed us in our mother's womb. You know us intricately. You love, you love us unbelievably. May we trust you more each day and trust in your power. Lord, those of us that have been believers, Lord, for years, we know how much you have changed us and transformed us in this sanctification process to become more like Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What a Savior and what power we have seen in our own lives. Lord, we pray that your power would become even more evident as we give you more of us every single day so that we can be like you. Lord, so that you can use us to further your kingdom in the time that we have. We love you. We thank you for all you've done. We thank you ahead of time for all you're going to do. We pray all these things in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us this morning. We're so excited uh, for two weeks from today. And uh, we'll open the building back up, Lord willing. And I hope to see a lot of you then. Uh, we'll have one more week of the Facebook Live. But even when we open the building up, 
we will uh, keep the Facebook Live going. So uh, God bless you. Have a great week. Go in peace.